Just in general, how have guys taken to what you, you started in training camp, and do you see progression from what they learned in the spring to applying it now? I do. I really do. I'm really uh, pleased with where we're at. You know, the thing that you look at when you're new is what was the retention rate, you know, from the spring going into the fall. And again, I've said it before, I thought that, you know, the work that they put in over the summer on their own is huge. Uh, it was evident that they really put the work in. And so when we came back in, in fall camp, I, th I feel like there's a great sense and a great knowledge of the carryover from the spring till now. Um, it's been pretty evident. You know, we still are not full throttle in terms of uh, the total installation of everything that we're doing. Uh, but that's kind of a day-by-day -day process in terms of where we are versus where we need to go. So sometimes we move ahead a little bit and then we realize, hey, we need to go back and, and clean some things up and, and uh, make some, you know, finer detailed points before we move to the next thing. So that's kind of, again, a daily uh, kind of evaluation process, but overall very pleased with, you know, how they came back and the retention rate from the spring. How about how much percentage-wise would you say you have in Salt? I would say we're probably at the 80% range now, uh, climbing our way up, but, but we're, we're probably somewhere in the 80 to 85% range. So there's not a lot more uh, in terms of installation, uh, but we're, we're definitely not there yet. How much have the guys that started this month, you know, like Aaron and Crawford, Mike Hughes, how much have they caught up to where the guys that were here in the spring? You know, I'm really proud of those guys. Th 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 this is a hard, it's just really a hard time for, for freshmen coming in, particularly if you didn't come in in January, you know, and that's kind of, you know, kind of the way everything's, you know, is evolving now. But, but you use Aaron Crawford as an example and Mike Hughes as an, as an example, who did come in a little bit early. But um, I think everything was very moving very fast. I think they were a little bit big-eyed at first. I think what's happening now as this thing evolves is they start getting used to the speed of the game and the way it really is in college. And that window to kind of get used to that environment, it usually takes about two weeks. So I think the game is slowing down speed-wise for them now, getting used to in, in a, if you're a defensive lineman like Aaron, getting used to you know, the size and speed of those guys, and then if you're a skill position player, the size and speed of the wideouts, that part's slowing down. I still think mentally, though, it really, really takes a while. Sometimes those guys don't fully get it till you get into the season. And you know, that becomes the mental part of the game, which, as we all know, is, is a very critical piece of the puzzle. But uh, very proud of how they're coming along. The thing that I like about our young guys that we just signed that came in here new is I love their competitive edge. I love their competitive edge. They will come out there every day and they will fight and claw and scratch to try to gain a position. And as a coach, when you're looking at a young guy, if that's not in place, they have no chance to play early. If that is in play and they're not afraid to get their hands dirty and compete, then the evolution of defense will come with knowledge of the game and things of that nature. So uh, I'm very proud of our young guys because I don't think anybody came in here uh, without the intention to really get on the field and play, and they're competing like that. Given where you, the starting point when you came here, what is the reasonable expectation as you go forward here this season, this first season? I don't know. You guys are going to write about it. You tell me. No, I mean, really. I did, you know, everything that we talk about is the process of getting better every day. That's very cliche-ish, and I understand that. But there's three things that really stand out that we talk about on a daily basis for our guys, and it's true. It's not cliche. Number one, it's the accountability in your own box. It's the accountability of executing exactly what we're asking you to do, the way we're asking you to do it, on 70 different opportunities possibly in a game or more. Okay, that's the first thing that that's the first picture, mental picture we're trying to build with our guys. The second thing is trying to teach them the big picture of situational football. You play differently at the end of the half or at the end of the game based on some circumstances, meaning you're trying to always cheat as a defensive player. We're trying to eliminate possibilities of certain things that can happen so that we can cheat and play the things that we think will happen. That's situational football. 
And so we're really spending a lot of time on that. And then the third thing really for us to be able to see some dynamic change is we've got to be just light years above where we were last year in terms of tackling. And we're not there yet. Some days you see it and it's glaring that it looks like we're working in the right direction. Some days we're not. So until the consistency of that happens, um, you know, we can't totally improve as a defense because the game is still blocking and tackling. It's still blocking and tackling, no matter how you, you, you slice it. So, you know, those are the three areas. Do your job, understand the situation, and we got to be able to tackle the football and down the football. It's really that simple. And those three things we spend a lot of time on. And if we'll do those, then I think you'll see a much improved defense. If we don't, or we're one for three of the, in those categories, right, um, you know, you won't see a lot of change because you can't be a better football team defensively without accomplishing those three things. Once they get to this level, how much can tackling be improved or is there such a thing as a guy is either a tackler or he's not? It can be improved tremendously because the, the part of the accountability puts guys in positions to make tackles. When you see missed tackles many times, a lot of it is related to them being out of position to make it. So as you pro approach the ball and you do your job and you're where you're supposed to be on the ball, then that exponentially increases your opportunity to bring it down. If you're late because your eyes were wrong or you're not doing or not being where we're asking you to be, then your chances of making the tackle exponentially go down because you're not in a position to do it. Now, through the bare eye, people are just going to look and say, oh, that guy missed the tackle, that guy missed the tackle. But when you go into the detail of where we're asking you to be, more than likely a high percentage of the time they weren't in the right position to make it, and that's why you see them miss it. So that's why it all ties together with the accountability of where we're asking you to get. Without making an assessment of the previous regime or anything, were you surprised that, that those fundamentals were at that level for an ACC team when you took over? I don't want to go down that path because, I mean, you know, I don't know what was taught. I don't know, you know, any of those things. In terms of the raw material? Um, you know, like I said, you know, we started from square A and we're, we're trying to get to, to Z. And, um, you know, you, it's like I tell the defense all the time. You're going to get whatever's important to you. That's like all of us, right? If it's not important to any of you to write a good story, you're not going to write one. If it's important to you to write a great story that's accurate, that's what you're going to do. So if that is important to us and us and we as coaches are presenting that information as being important, then we should be better at it. So I don't know all of the if, ands, and buts of you know how everything was presented and what and why. I just know that we're not there yet, um, but it is important to us, and we work it daily. This is kind of, this is kind of broad, but what do you want your defense to be known for? Physicality. Period. Because you can't win games. In this day and age, you can't win games saying that, you know, well, we play X amount of spread offenses, so, you know, we're going to finesse them and bring them down in space. No, that's part of being physical. That's part of putting yourself in the right spots. Uh, everything in this game is about physicality. I have not ever been around a good defense that's not physical. Never. I've never been around a good defense that's not physical. Everything starts with the point of attacks up front. Everybody starts with, everything starts with the fits of the linebackers and where they're supposed to be. The safeties fit off those guys. And everybody's got to have a mentality of physicality. We point it out every day when it is, and we point it out every day when it isn't. And it either is or it isn't. I mean, anybody can look at a film, and you don't have to be a football expert to know that we're playing physical or we're not. Is the line of scrimmage knocked back or is the line of scrimmage being set? That starts to set the defense. So physicality in my mind is absolutely paramount if you're going to change the mentality of a defense. If, if, it's, if, it's, more, if it's all about physicality and point of attack and things like that, how important is scheme? I mean, because you've changed the scheme around. How important is that and how different is the scheme from what they were playing with? Right. The scheme is very important. 
uh, only from the sense of everybody knowing exactly where they're supposed to be. So the scheme is absolutely important. And it's about how you teach that scheme. So it's completely different from many things that they know, uh, which is frankly where the challenge lies, right? And, but the schematic part of it is extremely important. Because in today's football, there's so many run pass conflicts out there, meaning this, when you hear that, that a linebacker might have to play in this gap, but he's also got this pass responsibility and a play action of some nature may put him in conflict with which one he has. That's today's football. It's changed. So there's all of those things going on. What is my primary job? What is my secondary job? So the schematic part of it is extremely important. Uh, and it's extremely different from you know, much that they've done here in the past. When you step into a situation that was clearly broken, how much of the methodology of coaching them is instilling them the belief that they can actually do this stuff? Well, you know, we, we've got great kids here. And we always talk about the care factor. And it's real simple. If you care about what you're doing, not when things are going well. Everybody cares and they're all happy when things are going well. What we have to do is build a care factor no matter what the circumstances are. We can't play defense based on the circumstances of the game, meaning, boy, we're up and everybody's fired up and everybody's playing well, and then all of a sudden, we're down two touchdowns or three touchdowns, which could be, which could be a very much a reality in some games, right, where we got to come back and win it. You're always pressing. You're always mentally right now, always trying to play the same way. And so they're great kids. They care. They want to improve. Nobody liked the results of last year any less than they do. Nobody. No coaches, no media, no fans, nobody. They did not like the results either. So they care enough to try to work every day to change them. So they got to play through the good times and the bad, and it always has to be uh, consistent as we, as we move. And I think that's really the message with them. Uh, we're not playing any Dr. Phil games, right? We're just trying to get them to play consistent football and understand that that's how we work our way through adverse situations.